I've recently reviewed the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Well, as much a review as I could by watching videos and researching the specifications. I also had a lot of feedback too in the comments. Of course, a lot of people thinking I'm just biased as a Tesla investor or fanboy, but I finally got to take one out for a test drive. I am generally trying to do what I can to research the EV industry firsthand. This is not a channel that goes and listens to what other people say and simply paraphrase it back to you. This is original research and thought that may go against the grain at times. And I might be wrong at times, but I will at least offer unique perspectives to make you think differently. I actually went to Hyundai a couple of times to try and test drive this car, but it was always out. In fact, when I got to this time, it was only because someone else had not turned up to their test drive appointment. I've had similar issues trying to test drive other EVs in the city too. It's almost like EVs are really popular or something. Maybe the way of the future of transportation perhaps. The Ionic they had available was the two-wheel drive version. In person, it kind of looks cool, but once you get really close up and look at the lights, they don't look quite as good. I'm not sure how to explain it, but although it looks futuristic, it still looks, I think, cheap, for lack of a better word. The design just didn't seem to flow quite right and I think this design will date quickly too. It almost feels like it's somewhat dated already. Compare it to a Tesla Model 3 with a design we first saw revealed over five years ago now, and it still looks current. Well, at least the ones with the Chrome Delete. A lot of people criticize Tesla designs, but they age very well. Hence the 10 year old Model S design still selling today. Okay, sure, with some refreshes. Okay, I should admit that I actually am a car snob. I think that probably is an accurate way to describe my appreciation of cars. For legacy autos, I only ever liked European cars. I just had a great appreciation for the high quality builds, superior performance, and all those extra safety acronyms. It was a passion I had. I loved European cars. So I'm coming in as a car snob rather than a Tesla fanboy, but looking at the interior, then I have to say, the Hyundai has done a good job as far as minimization. Minimalism is the best design, although I don't think many other auto companies realize this yet or simply have the technology to achieve it. They need buttons. But the Hyundai was not so bad. There was still a whole section of buttons for the climate control, which looked a bit cheap, especially with the small LCD screens displaying the temperature. Also had a start button, something that is not necessary with electric vehicles. Quite a few extra buttons on the steering wheel too. However, the air vents were not as hideous as on other cars. It looked like they'd simply made them smaller. I guess they are aware of how much better it looks like in the Tesla and tried to reduce their air vent footprint, but it's still old air vent technology. I guess it's simply too difficult for them to do air vents like Tesla. I played around with the buttons and to be honest, they all felt quite solid. Not as cheap as we see in many other cars. Almost all the car felt fairly robust, which was good to see. The cup holders in the middle were just like a floating island of cup holders. It was fairly solid, but could be moved about a bit, a slight wobble. However, with no major center console, this felt like a bit of wasted real estate. The handles in the door were also not as solid as a Tesla. There were two widescreens, but they both felt very small when coming from a Tesla. The future definitely requires large widescreens similar to an iPad as the major entertainment and control center. Very few vehicles have realized this. Even Lucid got this wrong. I think Rivian, Xpeng and BYD are the only ones that actually have a large enough center widescreen, aside from Tesla of course. Along with the placement of these screens too, if it's a touchscreen then you want it to be lower down. Same for every single car, except the issue is they all put air vents right below the screens, so they can't ever put the screens in the right place, the easiest to control and view for the driver. Hyundai are still using USB for charging in a brand new car. Tesla have been using USB-C for some time, not only that, even wireless charging too. I don't know if it's an upgradable feature with their Hyundai perhaps, but still, it goes to show how wrong companies like this can get basic technology. It's pretty obvious these days to have a USB-C charger, not USB. Although the interior did feel minimalist, it still felt cheap. It felt like it was finished with cheap plastic, cheap upholstery, the seat didn't feel overly comfortable, there was no soul to the car, it didn't feel like anything special. Then we took it for a test drive. Now, admittedly, I do not have a lot of experience with non-European cars. I try to avoid driving them, so I may possibly have a higher standard than the typical driver. But the first thing I noticed was how loose the steering wheel was. It barely felt like it was connected to the wheels. It moved around so loose, and there was very little response to detect from the road. Now, the salesperson told me the car was 74 kilowatt hours and front wheel drive, but online it appears to be 77 kilowatt hours and rear wheel drive, but this may have been an older version perhaps. Now, given that my Tesla was a similar battery size at 82 kilowatt hours, I might have expected some sort of performance out of this. I put my foot down and it felt like nothing happened. Absolutely no sudden whip of power. 
I'm not joking. I thought electric was all about instant power due to the motors having so much torque. This was just a gentle, smooth accumulation of speed. I couldn't believe it. It's supposedly 0 to 60 in 7.4 seconds, which I guess isn't particularly quick, and it's been a long time since I ever drove something that slow to compare it with, but either way, I expected better with a battery this size, and this car was not at all cheap. You could buy a Model 3 for the same price. Admittedly, there is also the dual motor version of the Ionic that does hit 60 in 5.2 seconds, which was about the same as the old standard range Model 3. The dual motor sacrifices a lot of range in order to achieve that though, dropping from 303 miles to 256 miles, along with the additional cost. Whereas the Model 3 long range dual motor Tesla is hitting 358 miles of range, with 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Okay, sure, the Model 3 is not a crossover, but the Onyx wasn't that big a car. In fact, it was quite compact. Actually, the Model 3 is about half a meter longer than the Ionic. This was the first non-Tesla EV I have ever driven, so I really was keen to see just how much of the magic in my Tesla was because it was simply battery powered and how much of it was Tesla. Okay, and Hyundai are not up there with the German legacy autos, but they are a reasonable brand and have done an excellent job in building their brand over the years. This also was not their first electric vehicle. I think it might even be their third, excluding Kia's but I was extremely underwhelmed. I may not have gone in with the highest of expectations, but the car didn't even meet those. I'm still planning on test driving as many other EVs as I can, like the Mercedes. That will be interesting to see how much better a job Mercedes can do, given the car will cost 50% more than the Hyundai. But this offering was not even close to anything like a Tesla. I really wish I could go and test drive the Xpeng, Neo, and BYD and see just how close the Chinese are getting. A Polestar may arrive here sometime though, which will be good to try. I find all the other car reviews to be grossly inaccurate and simply praising the Hyundai too much, or perhaps just comparing it to other such vehicles and ignoring the elephant in the room, Tesla. Or perhaps there'd be little point in watching car reviews that simply say every car is either so antiquated because it has to burn dead dinosaurs to make them go, or if they're electric, then failing miserably to be anything remotely close to Tesla, which is kind of how my car reviews generally go. But that's how I see them through my eyes. And I don't think I'm wrong when you just compare the specifications and even relative to price. I'm pretty good at math and all these cars fail miserably against Tesla. Therefore, I believe I truly am being objective. Honestly, I get the feeling some people think I should be giving them a participation medal or something. Well, okay then, Hyundai have participated in making an EV that may be as good as their ICE vehicles, but likely can't make enough of them and can't make them at a profit. The truth is the truth. But if you have to have a Hyundai crossover that needs to be electric, then the Ionic is definitely the car for you. If you simply want something electric at a similar price point, then the Model 3 all day long. But a lot of people like this car and it seems to be selling well. Besides, it doesn't need to beat Tesla or even come close. No one can compete with Tesla. Hyundai just need to beat their ICE offering, at least for now. Except despite its popularity, they can't make enough and they can't make a profit either. So there is that issue too. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.